Hello, welcome back. And uh, as you can see, we continue our discussion with the diode connected transistors to generate the reference voltages. And these reference voltages are useful in variety of circuits as we discussed in our previous modules. And we told you about using the BJT NPN transistor its collector and base short it together and then it becomes a Schottky diode model, model, simply a PN junction diode in which we have uh, our uh, current that is flowing through this diode, which is a function of the applied, uh, the generated voltage, okay? And this is how this exponential behavior. And here we got that VBE, basically, this is your VCE is equal to VBE and that generated this voltage. We call it as a V out and that becomes a reference. And now we've seen that it has a temperature dependence as shown by this curve. And the slope of this line is theoretically set to be minus two millivolt per degree centigrade. So every increment in one degree centigrade, you have a drop of about minus two millivolts in the voltage uh, between base and the emitter, which is uh, essentially at room temperature considered to be 0 0.7 volts or 0 0.65 or something in between that range. Now, what if, uh, the objective here is to tell you, what if we replace these, uh, we know that the current and uh, diode equation, current and voltage relationship is given by this e to the power, uh, let, me, let me just confirm here the relationship power VD divided by eta VT minus one, where VD is your forward voltage drop, VT is your thermal voltage, eta is the parameter for silicon, it is equal to one. And uh, when this term e to the power VD divided by eta Vt is very greater than one, your current through the diode equates to e to the power Vd divided by eta Vt, okay, approximately. Now, what if I want to replace this Vjt with the MOSFET? So let's do that and see the dependence of the generated Vgs. In the MOSFET, it will be Vgs between gate and source we'll see that with respect to temperature. So I will just uh, use this, uh, the delete command from here, I will cut this diode. And then from the component library, I would like to have, I click here and I will call MOSFET, for example, I will search for that device. And uh, let me find that out. How it is. Here it is your PMOS, and then you have this NMOS also. So NMOS is here. We'll use this folder NMOS, N channel MOSFET uh, with explicit substrate connection used for monolithic MOSFETs. So we'll do that and I'll place it right here and then press escape on the keyboard, then use the wire to make the connection between gate and the drain. This extra net can be removed. And again, I'll place wire to connect the body to the source and press escape. I'm connecting the body to the source to get rid of the body effect common with the MOSFET, okay? We'll explore that somewhere else. Now you see I am using this V plus supply here, right here. And using through the register R1, I am actually drawing the current ID, let's say ID. And that current is uh, going to the drain per terminal, drain pin of the MOSFET. This is your drain pin. This is your gate pin and that's your source. And essentially the gate current IG 
is equal to zero because uh, is a metal oxide semiconductor. You have an insulator between metal and semiconductor that's that's inhibits your that inhibits your current tunnel through the gates inside the MOSFET. With that said, I have this uh, again diode connected fashion, but it doesn't work as a PN junction diode. It is not a PN junction diode, unlike BJT. Okay, so we still prefer to call it like diode connected transistor. Okay, and the behavior of this uh, diode when the drain and gates are shorted will be that. If you see the current voltage characteristics, you have this drain current, you have the voltage across the diode, that is the VDS, which is nothing but your output voltage, and which is equal to VGS also, because you let the drain current pass through the MOSFET, it gives rise to the electric voltage that is VGS across the gate and source or drain and source. And that's your reference voltage. And the behavior is very simple because of the diode connected fashion, your transistor is always going to operate the right of this dotted curve, which is the saturation region. Okay, and the slope of this line is one over RO, which is your transconductance. And uh, the region, left to this line is called as triode region which we your diode can work as a resistor simply a linear resistor because i and look at the relationship between i and voltage i and v so now when in saturation you say uh, the equation of the drain current in saturation is uh, one over two k n uh, then you have W by L of this transistor and in bracket you say VGS minus VTH whole square in bracket 1 plus lambda VDS where lambda is coming due to the channel length modulation where your output resistance is not infinite. It has a finite value when lambda is equal to is not equal to zero. And therefore, you have to account for this term. But ideally, you can say, okay, my MOSFET is ideal and we'll, because we are interested in simulating the temperature response of this circuit. So we'll just approximate this equation with this. Kn is the process parameter, W by L of this transistor. And then I will write simply VGS minus VTH all square. So there is a square law behavior, quadratic relationship between current and the voltage. So it's a kind of uh, uh, the current and the voltage curve in the saturation, which is exactly what you draw here. Now, well, let me do uh, this uh, first analysis. So let me show you what is the MOSFET and what's its parameter. So this is NMOS transistor. If I right click here, you see I have an option. The circuit simulator gives me an option to put a length value, width value, drain area, source area, the drain perimeter, source perimeters, and number of parallel devices. For example, if I'm using the array, for example, in the current mirror application, uh, let's have a look at the previous model. We have a lot of tutorials on that. So do not miss that. So in the case of current mirror, you can use simple one single transistor, and then you say it has a number of transistor 10. So n, m equal to 10 suggests you have 10 transistors in parallel. So that acts as an array of MOSFET. So let's say I use like uh, one nanometer is my channel length and uh, 100 nanometer is my channel width. 100, so width to length ratio is 100 and the drain area is low, uh, whatever the parameters I can put up and as soon as uh, uh, let's say one nm square and then you have like uh, again one nm square it's like that okay and uh, this is how i will keep inputting the parameter look at this spice model that is getting created here okay i have to check whether the drain area uh, can be written like this nm square like this okay but we just keep them blank if we wish 
and that means you can keep those uh, filled blanks and it will have uh, no effect with that. So number of parallel devices also, I'll keep this and uh, we can just uh, do that later. For example, we'll just use the plain MOSFET. Let's say cancel. Once that is done, uh, what I'm going to do here, I am going to simulate the operating point analysis first. So here is the operating point analysis dot op, which uh, allows me to print uh, all voltages and the currents into the circuit. So let's dive into that. Right click the step, the temperature sweep for a moment and disable it by putting this symbol. And then you see, boom, you have this command disabled. And now I have only operating point. So I don't have graph also for the operating point. So I go to simulation here and I click run and I have the a file generated which is the which is operating point uh, information so I have at node voltage n one right here I have 5 volt coming from the voltage source then V out which is my VDS that is the minimum voltage I dropped to operate the transistor in the saturation is still large because uh, 5 minus 4.7 is just 0.3 volt. And then I have this 4.7 volt that is generated as a reference voltage, okay? If I increase the value of resistor, then you have to understand what can happen here. Then you have uh, 002, that is, uh, what is that voltage? Uh, source is grounded and the gate is also grounded. Uh, so this net and this net is V out. So we have to figure out what is this one. Let's have a look at the drain current. It is about 0 0.2 milliampere, which is 200 microampere. And then gate current is initially zero. And you have this uh, register and all those information is there. So you have a drain current about 200 microamperes. So we'll see that. And right here, we don't have information about threshold voltage of the transistor. So we don't have information about the VTH of this transistor, okay? How about we use some transistor from the manufacturer? For example, I would, uh, I have this option about the width and length. For example, if I put one nanometer and the width is about, let's say, 10 nanometer, and then other things, I keep it blank. And uh, that's it, and uh, okay. And then simulate it again. And here you see now the output voltage is 3.66 volt. And this uh, voltage at node 2 is 0 0.14. Where is that voltage coming? Well, we have to figure out. But the current is now about 1.3 milliampere. And that's what uh, we want. So let us say that uh, with that done, now we are all set to see this behavior with the temperature sweep. So what we'll do, we'll just enable this command, click OK, put it here and then simulate. And we'll see how this reference, generated reference varies uh, like this. So it has a positive temperature coefficient. You see, we are basically uh, using this uh, output voltage, which is the VGS generated VGS is uh, at room temperature about here, it's about 3.6 volt here. And from minus 40 to 120, it is increasing from 3.4 to 3.95. And you can calculate the slope of this line that gives you its uh, a temperature coefficient, right? And see an interesting idea in the BJT case, we saw the behavior that was uh, basically like this. It was like dropping, okay? So it has a negative TC. 
but in this situation you have a positive tc so there is a good idea about using the mosfet transistor along with the bjt to create to create uh, what what can i say a temperature independent circuit right a temperature independent circuit we can create so that's it so we we saw saw that this is how the behavior for example if i don't put these parameters then also we can see the behavior just as an exercise so we'll just see that is uh, is again the same behavior that we see here except that the voltage uh, dc operating level is different now Okay, so the idea is that you write in the comment box uh, how the BJT and MOSFET as a discrete circuit be combined together to generate the reference voltage independent of uh, independent of uh, temperature variations. Uh, I think to the first order we can cancel this effect. Okay, so stay tuned for this uh, one.